So you know that computer programs came on tape and diskette and later optical media, but did you know that they came on paper? Welcome to Gadget Blues. This is KC, and today we have a little retro computing segment where I'm going to talk about some programs that came on paper. We are all familiar with programs that came on cassette cartridges, and then later on diskettes, then optical discs like CD and DVD, and now pretty much everything is just downloaded from the internet. Well, there was another format that had a brief period in the 1980s, and that's what we're going to show you. Now, it's important to understand that in the 80s, we were seeing a transition of PCs from a hobbyist and tinkerer sort of pastime into actual business and home use. This is a issue of Byte Magazine from 1986, and it has a little program listing here in BASIC that you would type in and run. So you get this program free, printed in the magazine. Many of them were much longer than this. Some of them were even in assembly code, and you would type in a hexadecimal version of the program. If you make one mistake typing in this basic, it is not going to work. Of course, if you make one mistake typing in the hexadecimal, that's so much harder to find the problem. And it was pretty tedious to type this in, even if your computer had a decent keyboard. A lot of keyboards on personal computers back then actually were pretty poor. Uh, they had a lot of units with chiclet keyboards or keyboards with poor feedback. And it would take a long time to type in one of these and troubleshoot. Of course, it was educational because you got to see how the code worked by typing it in yourself, which was a more intimate way of understanding the program than just being given the basic code on floppy disk. So it was fun and free, but a little bit tedious to get these program listings in magazines, many of which were many pages long. So an outfit called Kauzin or Kauzin Systems, C-A-U-Z-I-N, thought, hey, we have a solution for this. We are going to print the programs in two-dimensional barcode that looks like this. This is essentially the same as the QR codes that you see popularized today, except it contains a lot more data. The system was called SoftStrip, and they would call the software Stripware. You would not only get free software in magazines printed like this, but you could also purchase some programs on standalone SoftStrip media. This particular program is an ear training program for musicians, which is kind of interesting. Right next to the program listing, we have an ad for the soft strip system itself, including the reader and the software, which would come in optional display for your computer store. And you might say, why not just distribute this software on floppy disk? And while there was a lot of free software on floppy disk that you would pay only for the disk in software libraries of shareware and freeware maintained by user groups, a lot of people didn't have access to that, and it may not have this particular software. Floppy disks themselves were relatively expensive up until this time, and they were too expensive to offer with most magazines. Later on, in the late 80s and early to mid 90s, you would see a lot of magazines coming with a three and a half inch or five and a quarter floppy disk, particularly three and a half inch once the Amiga took off. But here in 1986, it was still rather prohibitively expensive to include a floppy disk with a magazine, so this was a decent method. But SoftStrip really didn't last very long. It didn't catch on because the price of floppy disks was coming down dramatically. 
here's an ad for floppy disks as low as 54 cents each in single side double density. That was a dramatic reduction from a few years earlier where they would cost as much as four or five dollars a piece. This spelled the end of the soft strip system. So it had to run only of a couple of years and not much software was released for it, but it is an interesting historical curiosity. What you needed to read this thing was the soft strip system reader. This is essentially a scanner and you would place it over the soft strip in the magazine or in the standalone soft strip and it would send it to your computer via serial port. On the back we have a lot of optimistic predictions of software becoming available on soft strip in the future. I don't think many of these were ever produced. I don't recall seeing any of these for sale in any of my local computer stores. You see the copyright 1985 Kausen or Kausen Systems Incorporated. So let's take a look inside this thing. In the box here, we have the soft strip reader itself. Still has the plastic stuffed in here to protect the optical scanner, which is that little bar right there. This part of the unit moves back and forth along the soft strip and reads the data. This is the model RDR100. On the end here, we have the power switch, a power connector, and an RJ11 jack used for the serial port connection. This is the base for the system. We align that little bulging thing with the base. Here is the RJ11 to DB25 serial port connection. And then an AC power supply which provides plus 10 volts DC and minus 12 volts DC at 15 watts. Rather unusual combination of power. To use the system, you would put the base here. See the little dot on the paper it needs to be on top of that little part there. So you put the reader on and align that so the right side has that mark aligned, and the left side you can see the dot through the hole. And then you would connect that to your computer, tell the software to scan, it would scan it, and after scanning all pieces of the software, you would have a complete program in your machine. So that's a quick look at the soft strip system, a fascinating little niche product from the mid 1980s that lets you receive programs printed in magazines and on other paper materials. If you enjoy this retro stuff, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next Gadget Blues.